Hey everybody, welcome to the show. As you know, you are listening to the Greenlight Weekend Podcast and I am your host, Brian Nystrom, each and every motherfucking week. Why do I do it every week? I don't know, but it's like one of the most consistent things I've ever done in my life. I've been doing it for four years and it feels right. I don't know. I think any uh, amount of discipline is good for me at this point. Okie dokie, enough about me. Let's talk about our guest today, James Mirabal. Um, This podcast is coming out a little early this week. Usually we come out Fridays. We're going to come out today. And uh, that's because we're trying to promote his show this Friday. They're opening for Cycles, this band that is playing at the Animus City Theater. James's new group is called Andy and the Gents. It is Andy, Gent, uh, James Mirabal, and my boy Evan Stambler. They're going to kill it. Um, I haven't seen their new group. I don't know what kind of music they're doing, but they're going to fucking kill it. They're great musicians. I can't wait to see what they're doing. I will. Oh, I was going to be there, but my girl's dancing in a show, so I got to go to that. So I guess I'm not going to be there. But you guys should go. They're opening four cycles on Friday, December 10th. Uh, James is also throwing a big show on New Year's Eve at the Powerhouse Science Center. Uh, Durango Tire Fire is going to be there. He's got a DJ. I don't know what other musical groups are going to be there, but Jadrian's running security, so go check that out. Uh, James will be running around playing producer man. Um, it's cool what he's doing. He's trying to start throwing shows. He's trying to like start that phase of his life. I think if anybody can do it, it's him. Um, he knows everybody. He knows he's the best sound engineer in the area by far. Um, so I'm excited. I know the sound quality is going to be good and I bet it's a good fucking time. So go support James this Friday at the act and new year's Eve, that new year's Eve show, $25 pre-sales, $35 at the door. So get your tickets now. What the fuck else are you doing on new year's? You're going to get drunk anyway. Might as well be around a bunch of people enjoying some beautiful music. And Jay's going to be there. Good old Jay dream long. Alrighty, let's talk about our sponsor. Our sponsor is Dead Room Comedy. Dead Room Comedy is a comedy group and production company based in Denver, Colorado. It is comprised of four very funny stand-up comedians. They are a super team of comics. I'm excited to see what they're going to be doing in the future. Together, they will help each other rise above, and uh, they're awesome. They, they're a great fucking group of comics. Check them out at deadroomcomedy.com, all their social media platforms at Dead Room Comedy. And, of course, uh, their YouTube channel, which is called Dead Room Comedy. Those links are in the description. Go check them out. What else do we got to talk about before we start this thing? Oh, um, I'm going to be the Starlight's feature comic this month. I'm doing 30 minutes at the Starlight on December 27th. Um, I hope there's a good turnout. If you're listening to this, please go support because it's two days after Christmas. It's going to be a fucking tough sell to get people in there. Um, that is historically a tough week for comedy anyway. Is that why Emma asked me to do it? I don't know, but I hope there's a good turnout because it's the first time I've done 30. I am fucking nervous, but I think it'll be okay. Whatever. As long as I put in the work, which I may or may not do. I don't know. I have a bit of a drinking problem. I just picked up dog poop in the snow. Oh, it's finally snowing in Southwest Colorado. It may have died down a little bit, but when I was picking up dog poop 10 minutes ago, it sure was snowing on me. I got cold. Um, it's a whole thing. Uh, but it is good to see the moisture. Um, hopefully we get enough so our town doesn't burn down this next spring. But we shall see. Um, I'm also doing a fun thing this this week. I'm going to be on the Whiskey Reel podcast for the first time. It's the first time I've ever been a guest on any podcast. They've asked me in the past. I just didn't have time to make it happen. And I'm going to fit them in. Um yeah, that comes out every Tuesday morning. Uh, go check them out. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? I guess we could just talk about our guest. Our guest is James Mirabal. He is a dear friend of mine. He's the best sound engineer in the four corners, and he's an awesome fucking guy. This was honestly one of the best uh, podcasts me and James have ever had. Usually he's really excited about it, and then we hit record, and he's just quiet, and I'm trying to drive the conversation. That was not the case this week. Um me and James have literally recorded podcasts that I didn't put out because it just wasn't that much going on. And I don't know if I could hurt my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know if I could hurt my reputation or this podcast reputation any more than I have in the past, but I try not to release shit that's not entertaining at all at the very least. Um, but yeah, we had a fun conversation. We talked for a little over an hour. We talked about all kinds of shit. I hope you enjoy it. Um, quick shout out to my uncle Curtis. 
new subscriber to the pod. Um, I hope he's not disappointed in me uh, based on what he sees on this podcast. But I'm just out here trying to talk shit and have fun. So shout out to Uncle Curtis all the way up in Washington. Um, before we get this podcast rolling, I want to give a shout out to Ethan Esparza and the Chava people for the intro outro music. As you may know, James Mirabal is part of the band. Um, he mixed all that music, all the music you hear on this. James pretty much had a part in. There's a couple songs Ethan sent me from Norway that James didn't take part in, but, uh, most of them, James had his fingers all up in, um, and uh, I'll make sure today one of those is what we play. Okie dokie. I feel like I'm rambling. We're over five minutes for an intro. That's ridiculous. Um, If you don't like these intros, tell me. I'll stop doing them. I don't know. I felt like this week it was important because I had a lot of information to get out there. And I also understand if it's boring. Um, I understand if you skip over it, whatever. But one thing I know you won't skip over is this music by Ethan Esparza and the Chava people. Okie dokie, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this show on the road. This is episode 163 with my boy, James Mirabal. Howdy. We're here. We got hashtag fuck James in the building. What's up, James? What's happening? For the, all the old school listeners, they would recognize the hashtag fuck James. It was, a, it was a theme there for a minute. I'm disappointed it's not going anymore, dude. Well, you haven't been pissing me off that much lately. Man. Consistency. That's Ex- exactly. <laughs> you got to be more consistent. It, but I do think absence makes the heart grow fonder. I, I do think I'm more happy to see you than I have been sometimes in the past. There was a lot of times I saw you and I was like, fuck, but I still love you. So I had to put up with your shit, you know? Yeah. I'm like that drunk uncle. I, I'm that drunk uncle now. Oh, you're the drunk uncle I have now. nephews, niece. I, I get to be the drunk uncle at, at holidays and whatnot. Nice. I am the drunk uncle. I'm the one. I'm always fixing dirt bikes every time I go to my dad's house. Oh, uncle man. Uncle Brian, will you come fix my dirt bike? Oh, man. You haven't taught them how to do it themselves yet? I mean, we're teaching as we go. Yeah. But I haven't fixed everything on it, so they haven't seen it all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Something different every time. Yeah, yeah. My mm-hmm. So my dad found these uh, dirt bikes that are like off-brand. And it was a good move that he bought them because I have two nephews. He bought two dirt bikes, and only one of them's into it. So he got two dirt bikes for less than the price of one like nice name brand bike. Nice. And he found out that the older one's just not into it. You know what I mean? So instead mm-hmm. of spending an extra four grand, he spent like fifteen hundred bucks, got two dirt bikes, figured out the little one's fucking ripper, loves that shit, fearless. Nice. Awesome to watch, dude. Nice. He's a fucking savage. Is he taking doubles and triples and shit? Tabletops? Not, well, not on that thing. <laughs> Let's just say he was blowing out rims like it's going out of style because these nice. piece of shit little cheap <laughs> dirt bikes just don't have quality parts you know <laughs> yeah. like plastic spoke holders and shit and uh, he was just destroying them. nice but yeah he's getting something super cool for christmas i don't know if he listens so oh shit but, yeah he's spoiler getting... alert yeah but the older one wasn't into it and it got to the point where the little one was riding the older one's bike mm-hmm. that's too big for him like height wise but He'd stand up on like a cinder block and fucking rah, rah, rip off. He's a savage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I think that's what my dad used to do when he was little. He he would race bikes that were too big for him. Yeah, and he would just have someone hold him up so he could start. I had friends growing up that like I had a friend that went pro for a while. Uh, Zach Gurley. He's he's a savage. But so, we were in like sixth grade and he was riding like two fifties. <laughs> like he would literally have to stand on blocks in the starting blocks and fucking smoke all your kids. That's was, crazy, dude. It's pretty impressive. Where, where is Zach Gurley from? Farmington. Farmington? Because yeah. my cousin John Gurley, he, he's, we are, we're all from Gallup, uh-huh. and he used to race motocross as well. Uh-huh. He was into like the freestyle mainly for a while. Interesting. Yeah. He'd, he'd do those kicker ramps. Yeah, that's a different breed of human. Dude. It's like, put me in the sky. <laughs> I've never been that guy. I've I've always had uh, what I like to consider a healthy fear. Yeah. 
of flying <laughs> on a motorcycle. Because <laughs> I've I've crashed really really hard, like like broken bones and fucking woke up later. You know what I mean? My bike's already loaded. People are like, dude. And then we go to the hospital, and then you know. Oh wow! You're giving me the uh, a memory, an old memory. I I just thought of right now. I when I was in school, I would make I'd get the posted notepads, and I would make uh, little dirt bike cartoons. Flip books. Yeah, flip book cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my teachers used to get so pissed at me because you weren't paying attention. You were drawing not. dirt bikes. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, How about be more interesting? Right. I mean, I had good grades. I was just like, whatever. Yeah, that, that was my <laughs> approach to school. As long as I uh, didn't disturb the class, yeah, you know, my grades were always fine. Never exemplary, just because it was hard to give a fuck. Mm. Because it's so boring. Mm-hmm. And if they actually paid teachers more, maybe there would be like an incentive to liven it up a little bit, you mm-hmm. know. But they're mm-hmm. barely living. Like, barely making a living wage. So, mm-hmm. I get why teachers get complacent. Yeah. It's just hard to expect a bunch of kids to fucking care about what this old bitch is talking about when <laughs> she's presenting it in the most boring way possible. <laughs> just reading out of a book. Like, yeah. Church it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You get it. You're an entertainer. Sure. Yeah. You got to keep, uh, you got to hold their attention. Um, and we're talking about adults. Yeah. That went to something for a specific reason and still don't give a shit unless you're holding their attention. Like, yeah, yeah, entertain me. Yeah, I had a, I had quite the uh, interesting run of teachers when I was a kid. I had like your usual old as the fucking hills mm-hmm. teacher, who you know you weren't gonna get much liveliness out of them. Right, and then you had your middle aged teachers, and there was two types of middle aged teachers that I had. One was like really with it and into the cared. subject and cared and and grabbed your attention, and then the other one was like, "I'm just here for a paycheck." Yeah. And then then I had young teachers, and the young teachers were super lively. In my experience, the best. Well, yeah, they're they're all right. My mine were I don't know they were lively, but they didn't know they were still new, mm-hmm. and so. I always kind of had a harder time with the younger teachers. I'd be like, what are you talking about? Just can you explain this one more time? Right. And they'd be like, oh, well, it's like this. And I'm just like, not following you. You're not <laughs> speaking my language. Yeah, but yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. The younger teachers, I only had a few of them sprinkled throughout my like educational career. Uh, one of them in high school. Man, uh, Mr. Mack. Mr. He was Mack. a bad motherfucker. Dude, for whatever reason, that motherfucker could teach. Nice. And he cared. He was all tatted up. He was a skateboarder, like when he was a kid, and like Sick. every once in a while he'd like show us his tats, and they were hardcore fucking tattoos, <laughs> like gnarly ass, like not gonna be a teacher tattoos, you know? Yeah, yeah. But he was the best teacher I ever had, and yeah. he's still teaching. Nice. Um, last time, so my stepmom teaches in the town where I went to school, went to high school at least, and last time. Like, once a year, she's like, oh, hey, I saw Mr. Mac. He said hi. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that that's cool. Like, mm-hmm. he obviously gave a shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where most teachers just expect you to give a shit without really, like, putting forth the effort themselves. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. also get it. Like, especially if you're older, you're just beaten down mm-hmm. by life. And mm-hmm. that's why PE is always awesome. Because the PE teacher's playing games all day. He's <laughs> in a good fucking mood. He's like, all right, dodgeball! Like, <laughs> dude. You can't play. They don't have dodgeball anymore in in public schools. Yeah, and we wonder why people are pussies these days. Jesus. Just breeding pussies. <laughs> breeding pussies. <laughs> fucking be harder on your kids. Make them fucking. I don't know. We fought and shit and like <laughs> played dodgeball, which sometimes led to fights. Which is how you figure out life. I don't know. It's how yeah. you figure out how to be a person and control yourself. It definitely gives character. You know, it's character building. Yeah, good character building. I feel like a lot of kids these days are missing out on that. Or, you know, it's like that uh, earlier conversation, you know, sometimes you just got to beat your kids a little bit. And, you know, character building. Can't wait to have kids. (laughs) I got old belts that I refuse to throw away because I'm like, this is going to be a good kid beat belt. (laughs) That's obviously a joke. Some some people save like little coats and shirts to give their future kids. I had a paddle with (laughs) holes in it. Oh, damn. Hung on the wall. And when I got in trouble, that motherfucker came off the wall. It, 
Yeah. That that's what you get with young parents though. It's like Damn. you just don't know what to do. Like the kid is obviously acting out for some reason and you're tired from working all day because you're poor because you had kids at 18 mm. and you're just fucking exhausted and your kids like ah! and then you got to beat your fucking kid. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Should we start that as a new hashtag if it's not already started? <laughs> hashtag beat your kids. Hashtag, hashtag beat your kids. <laughs> uh, I will tell you one thing beating your kids does is it makes them really good liars, or at least it did for oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> because I knew if I got caught, consequences were high. You know what I mean? Like, uh, man. high consequences. So I took high risks. Yeah. And then I always got in more trouble for lying than I would have for whatever the initial offense was, but I only got in trouble like 30% of the time. Uh, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. So one in three times I was getting my ass beat, but it was better than three out of three times. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, sh- my buddy was telling me about how his mom used to use a switch on him. Tight. Yeah. Like, did he have to go cut it himself off the tree? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. Like, go pick one. And if you came back with a bitch ass one, they'd send you back out there. Oh. Uh, nah. My mom was never go cut your own switch kind of person and my mom's a great person but she had a lot she had kids multiple kids and a full-time job and was fucking tired and Mm -hmm. you know i was a hellion i had a sister that refused to eat dinner sometimes Mm -hmm. and wasn't she probably had like some sort of like learning disability possibly dyslexia or something i'm not saying she's mentally challenged but like possibly dyslexia or something so homework Mm -hmm. was always a challenge with her Mm -hmm. and then i had another sister that was young the baby so she required a lot of attention but just the combination of all of it especially when you have a baby you're just like could you two fucking get your shit together (laughs) like just require less attention you know <laughs> i know people who leave their seven-year-olds at home to watch the three-year-old that was me <laughs> while they're out yeah that was me <laughs> uh to each their own you know i ain't judging i, ain't I mean judging. i think it instills I'd, just, I'd be worried the kids would burn the fucking place down yeah at this point for sure but we didn't have we weren't heating our house with fire mm. granted they smoked so there was fire available there was lighters and shit around you know what i mean but i don't know i think it instilled like a sense of responsibility and like Mm. independence yeah in some way yeah again i was doing i was breaking the rules daily so every three days i got beat (laughs) what are you gonna do hashtag beat your kids Woo! Uh, before we get too far into this, you got some shit coming up. You want to plug some shows? Oh, my God. Okay, quick plug. All right, listeners, do you like live music? Of course you fucking do. You should go to Anima City Theater this Friday, December 10th, and it's going to be Cycles. They're a jam rock band. They're shreddy. They're shreddy as fuck. They, they just they rock very hard. And my group, Andy and the Gents, is opening for them. Uh, 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 and, Andy uh, and the Gents. We, we're working on that cover still. You fucking it's, better be. We'll bust it out. We'll bust it out. But this is our, our first show. So, uh, yeah. Animus City Theater, December 10th. Also, New Year's Eve. Do you like live music? Of course you fucking do. Do you like to dress up? Of course you fucking do. Dress up as your favorite pop star, rock star, whatevs. And we're gathering at the Powerhouse Science Center for a New Year's Eve show. Durango Tire Fire, Durango's premier cover band. I love Durango Tire Fire. They just kick it. Oh, my God. They do and such a good job. That's a way better name than whatever other bullshit they were trying to think of. <laughs> well, I think, I think they're going to change their name. But Stupid idea. Right now, as it stands, Durango Tire Fire. We've also got a DJ, DJ Circadian, or Cir- Circadian. I think he just goes by Circadian. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, DJ Full live band. Sounds like house music. Um, big old PA system. Gosh, I don't, I don't even Circadian. know. Circadian. I don't even know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New Year's Eve though. Powerhouse Science Center. Tickets are on sale. Twenty five pre sale. Thirty five at the door. Whew. All right. That's all I'm gonna plug. Yeah. And Jadrian Long's running security. Yeah. Jadrian's running security. He's yep. a he's a podcast favorite. Nice. Yeah. He's been on probably more than anybody. Nice. Well, shit. We should have invited him to today's uh, show. I could have met him. I thought about it. It was just uh, 
a last minute. Oh yeah, it was last minute. together like an hour ago. And uh, JJ <laughs> technically doesn't have a driver's license. That's a whole thing. Oh, you you know I know how that goes. Uh, yeah, but it didn't stop you. That's the thing. <laughs> but JJ has a child, so he's being more responsible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Legally. That's a whole different story. Someone else is depending on you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, another little being. Yeah, I mean totally. she mostly depends on the mom. Let's be honest. JJ a comedian. <laughs> But he's working on it. Uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. I'm glad those days are behind me. I'm. I'm glad I have a license. Having now. a kid. Having. <laughs> <laughs> glad those days are behind me. You beat that kid enough, it'll fucking run away. Oh yeah. No, no. I just. I just drowned it in the pond. There you go. You know, it's like it's... a disgruntled mother. <laughs> <laughs> what was that bitch's like, name? Like the Yorona. Drowner kids in the fucking bathtub. <laughs> I forget. Oh. Oh, that's uh. That's a real, real thing. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a real thing. But I like how you went old school with the La Llorona. La Llorona. I think they made a movie too. Yeah, they did. Uh, I think in Mexico recently, some chick was like wandering the streets for hours, apparently pretending to be La Llorona, and then got shot. She got shot. Yeah. Someone was just like, "Fuck you, bitch." No, somebody was scared of La Llorona. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That sucks. That's like Bill Murray in Zombieland. Well, if you dress up like Sasquatch in Hick Country, might get shot. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think the Hicks want to shoot Sasquatch. I think they want to do other things with Sasquatch. Depends on how scared they are. <laughs> Tell me you don't know at least one person that would love to have Sasquatch's head mounted on their wall. You know, like, shh, don't tell anybody, but check out, I got a fucking Sasquatch. <laughs> That's insane, dude. People are crazy. Uh, I mean, that is. As for one, poor Sasquatch. I mean, he's you know a living being, but yeah, but, uh, that's just be an ugly ass thing to have on your wall. What? I, I mean, I don't know. Unless you, you you found a really beautiful looking Sasquatch, and you know, like like kind of Chewbacca esque. I would go old school. I would you know boil down the skull, which just the skull, like how they do with deer. You know, yeah, yeah. That would be gangster to have on your wall. I bet it has big ass teeth. Fucking. I wouldn't go hunting Sasquatch, but if Sasquatch is running at me, you better believe I'm going to shoot the motherfucker. Yeah, but Sasquatch runs away. Not at you. That's what they say. Uh, uh, I, fa- I saw something funny, actually. Nobody about lives the tail to tell. That's the thing. Like, Yeah. Um, maybe he's eating motherfuckers. Uh, I saw something. I was like, Sasquatch saw me, but no one would believe it. I think it was a beer sticker. Isn't there a beer company with a Sasquatch as their logo? I think so. I don't I don't know exactly. Mm. I don't have specifics. Mm. Mm. If only we had a producer on this show to Google things and edit everything. Well, there's a computer. You're just going to have to do everything at the same time, you know? No, we just act like we know what we're talking about and hope for the best. That's... That's pretty much how I live my life. And then, too, man. And then I make an ass out of myself, and then I learn, and then I just keep going. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I wish I learned things not the hard way sometimes. Yeah. You know? I never yeah. learn things the easy way. Yeah. Granted, I rarely look shit up before I try it, mm. but every lesson I learn <laughs> seems mm. to cost a lot of money and time, mm-hmm. and maybe I hurt myself. I don't know. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know who hurts themselves a lot is uh, Evan. Evan. Mm-hmm. Well, he he learns like I do. He hurts himself all the time. He's always walking in just like with a big old fresh cut or gash or something. Cause he's a go getter. Yeah, he is. He manhandles shit. That's what I love about him. Like a man. I don't know. Sometimes he manhandles shit a little too much. We had a bit of a thing this morning. Didn't cause any damage, but could have. Oh shit! I kind of yelled. It's okay. <laughs> oh god love the team oh speaking of the team philly cheese was on recently right yeah nice the cheese man i haven't talked to him in a long time yeah i uh i don't talk to him often the only reason he came on was because the uh, wife and kid went down to the families for thanksgiving week so he had like three days mm. he was like i'm gonna give you two hours nice i was like Hell yeah. Nice. We were supposed to just hang out, and I, a podcast guest bailed, and I was like, dude, I kind of need you. Mm-hmm. And he, he came through. We talked nice. about crypto. 
Yeah. Oh, crypto! That crypto life. Oh, what? Well, what? I'm I'm learning about crypto. Yeah, James is new to the crypto scene and is just as excited as everybody is when they get into it. I'm so stoked, Do you dude. Want some of this or not really? No, I'm good. You, I smoke some weed, and uh, this conversation will get real slow and real weird. That's fair. <laughs> I snorted some pre-workout before this, so don't even nice. worry. Nice, nice, good, good on you. I, uh, yeah, um, crypto is the shit. I just got my first bot that I'm experimenting with and, and learning. I'm, I'm doing small shit with it so mm-hmm. that I can like learn, you know, how to how to read my my graphs better and how to set the parameters on my bot. Right. So, yeah, trading bots, trading I could, bots. I could see that being something you would excel at. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, um, I'm just doing altcoin shit. Um, uh, I I did a lot of research into the companies that I that I bought in with. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I'm I'm looking, you know, definitely towards the future. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to day trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the bot is like as close to day trading as I would get. Um, but everything else is more like future investment and hope that these companies take off. And you're looking into the owners and uh huh. You're going deep. I go way deep. Future potential. Uh huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I see. I see who's owning it, who's running it, who they're partnered with. If they have like a board of trustees or whatever the fuck, I look at who's on their board. Right. I look at their tech and and their use cases. Like, are these coins, you know? Is this crypto useful, you know, or is it just a fucking meme coin like Doge? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any use for Doge. A lot of people made money, though. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people lost money. Yeah. That's how that works. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Everyone's like, oh, a lot of people made money. And it's like, where did that money come from? Yeah. All the poor saps (laughs) that fucking got. Jumped on the hype train. Got had. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not mad at it. I mean, I I choose to part or not partaking it too much i mean i did i made some money and cashed out when i quit my job it it benefited me mm-hmm. in the short term mm-hmm. um pr- i was in it for like a year nice. where i was like checking it every day and mm-hmm. you know just keeping an eye on your investment uh-huh and mm-hmm. it went down and i was like Bleh. and then <laughs> i it went back up, up and i was like it hit a peak and i was like word i'm out and then I went back down, and I was like, good move. And then it went way back up. I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> See? You never know. You yeah. never know. And what's funny is, like, all these people are always asking, like, you know, what's uh, what's the best coin I should get? And you know, what do you think it'll do in the next couple months? And it's like, nobody fucking knows that. <laughs> Google it, bitch. I don't know what to tell you. Not even Google knows. You got all these hype bros online, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they're just like, oh, to the moon or you know 50x 100x or uh, there's all these phrases i'm learning about that a lot of these people use let's go <laughs> let's go yeah yeah i'm just like oh my god you people are ridiculous well that whole x thing i know like phil he's he's super into day trading and he'll trade shit at like 10x sick 50x but sick. it's like you have to watch it yeah because if it's like five minutes could go by and you could lose everything uh-huh like because you're you're gambling at those stakes, you know yeah. what I mean? You got to fucking be on it, which I'm not. Yeah. And that's why I think you could excel at this. You have a different mind than I do. I very ADD like, which is probably why school was tough, but yeah. yeah, I'm quite ADD as well. So that's why I got this motherfucking bot, but you can still fuck shit up with bots too. So, sure. I'm I'm learning if I can learn and and uh get some good strategy going and and learn how these bots are working and how they're reading the the graphs and the market and all that bullshit and be nice if i could have like you know a few bots in the background just making me money yeah you know? i mean that's the dream yeah just passive income right yeah yeah you know go go to the fridge for a beer make some money right go take a shit make some money that's how landlords in durango feel yeah <laughs> <laughs> they just up the rent and they're like fucking the la- swim bitches the landlords in durango they'll walk in your place and take a shit in your place and they'll be like uh so yo you owe me rent yeah <laughs> welcome to durango <laughs> you don't have enough money to matter here <laughs> sorry uh this fucking town 24 hours notice okay get a lawyer oh you can't <laughs> afford one? Oh, oh sorry that, that's kind of how i feel <sighs> Luckily, I have the best landlord 
in Durango. Yeah, you do. You got a great landlord. He's very. Uh, he's a nice guy. Yeah, basically, he told me if anything happens, fix it, and we'll deal with it later. So <laughs> that's how I live my life. Nice. He knows you're quite handy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I moved in, he was like, "Yeah, I don't really know if it's livable, but if you can make it livable, we'll uh, no first and last, no security deposit, just move in and start paying rent." And I was like, "Word." Nice. <laughs> Saw the wood stove. Fucking made it livable. <laughs> Ching going. Nice, nice. So like. How unlivable was it, like, when you first saw the place? Uh, just some, like, holes in the roof and fucking, you know. It, would, it I think it had been vacant for, like, a year. So it was basically, like, a museum of spiders the first time I walked in the door. Literally, like, every wall, room, ceiling, just, like, spider webs across Sweet. rooms and shit. And, like, nice. It was pretty rowdy. Nice. Luckily. That reminds me of Eight-Legged Freaks. Yeah, it was similar. Yeah, I, there was a dirt bike involved. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot Arquette about the, was I here. Forgot, I yeah. forgot about the dirt bike scene. That's David Arquette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, fucking yeah. love David Arquette. He yeah. married Courtney Cox. He sure did. Professional wrestler, just rich for. Oh fuck! I forgot he was a wrestler. Jesus, you're like bringing some shit from the past. I really dude. like David Arquette. Yeah, wow. he put out a. I think he has like a docu series called "You Can't Kill David Arquette" or something. Huh. But it's, I'll have to watch that. He just does rowdy stunts and like WWE shit. And like, nice. He loves it. Nice. I just love anybody loving their life. Yeah. In any capacity, like yeah. anybody. Every time I see a DJ, like just having a blast on like an Instagram video, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, dude, I saw a picture of you with a a knight. A knight. Who is that? Uh, this dude from New Mexico, Andrew something, I don't know, I tagged him in that post, but, uh, okay. he just walked into an open mic <laughs> with Craig, actually. Oh, nice. He walked in with Craig. Just and, fully uh, knighted. Yeah, knighted like a, mu- with a sword, bro. <laughs> they let him in the bar with a sword. Basically, he was like, bartender was kind of like, what? And then he was like, you want to hold the sword? And the bartender held the sword and he was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he was like, word, handed it back and he was just cool. Dude, you just you just like moved your sword around, Light, but you made yeah. you made a lightsaber sound. Yeah, I'm a nerd. That's the swords. I guess it's chink chink, but <laughs> not in a racial way. No hashtag no Shane Gillis. <laughs> oh man, uh, did I tell you that I recently got into Joe Coy? You did. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm excited that you're excited about comedy. But you're like, bro, he's got to check out the biggest comic in the world. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, no shit. Uh, in case you didn't know, I live under a rock. Yeah. Or in a bus under a rock. Same shit. We're yeah. Basically Patrick off SpongeBob. Yeah. He lived under a rock. Yeah. Oh, with the starfish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Joe Coy is ridiculous, dude. Ridiculous. No, he's I, uh, I'm going to keep my eyes out for some more of his stand up because I think in one night I watched everything he has out. Yeah, it'll probably be on Netflix. Um, Netflix didn't want to put him on their platform, so he basically spent money, probably like three hundred grand, shooting his own special in a giant place that he had to rent out and whatever. Shot the whole thing and basically told Netflix, "You can have this for free. I just want to be a part of your platform." And then it just ding, 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 blew the fuck up. Is that the one he did in the Philippines? Uh, I don't think it was that one. I think that was after. Okay. Maybe the first one. Okay. I don't know. I don't recall what's on Netflix and what's not. I've, but I'm familiar. Yeah. That's crazy. He did that. Holy shit. Talk about investing in yourself. Well, that's how he started. I mean, he. Damn. I think he lived in Las Vegas, and uh, basically there just wasn't a lot of comedy shows or people wouldn't put him up or whatever, so he would like put all his money together. He was a broke comic, put all his money together, rent out a theater, get all his homies that you know the comics he thought were good enough to be on the show he would gather a group of comics put on a show sell tickets on the street and fucking hustle and that's how he got his start sick joe coy is a comics comic he is he's a hustling motherfucker yeah very inspirational damn he's a bad motherfucker that's pretty good uh you got any others i should check out noel i'm on the comedy train i mean there's so many good comics man yeah. Do you know Mark Normand? No. Sam Morell. Yeah, go ahead and write these down. Mark Norman, Sam Morell, Shane Gillis, um, Dan Soder is a beast. I mean, 
all these are basically New York comics um, that I'm spouting off, but none of them have Brooklyn accents, do they? Because I can't handle that shit. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, last person I had to work with had a Brooklyn that had a Brooklyn accent. I would just my ears would hurt after like uh, 15 minutes of right. talking to him. Sorry, Brooklyners, I'm sorry. I'm sure I have a weird accent to some people too, but the Brooklyn accent is just atrocious. Worse than Boston? Ah, uh, ah, uh, it's I don't know. That's a tough one. I really want to meet a hot chick that's like the fucking car. Like, I would love. <laughs> Get in the fucking car. <laughs> it just sounds fun. Oh, my God. I, that sounds like nails on a chalkboard to me. Hmm. Oh, my God. Racist. What do you think? Racist? <laughs> We're not talking about a race. Basically. <laughs> what do you, how do you think a, 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 like a heavy uh, Boston accented chick would sound in bed? Uh, 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 like, not good. Yeah. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> they reproduced because... People who live there didn't know the accent was a thing. They weren't like, I'll just go somewhere else and find a chick. Yeah, just imagine like you're hooking up with this Boston chick and her accent is super thick and the room is like pitch black. You know, you're just going at it. And then all of a sudden you're like, do you have a pe- uh, pet peacock? Yeah, just a In shitty ringtone basically. <laughs> just keeps going off. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I'm, now I'm thinking about it in my head. Good. Uh, Brooklyners are going to hate me now. Eh, we probably don't have that many of them. Uh, so what cool else? if we did. If you hate James, please uh, send some feedback. Start uh, Restart the hashtag fuck James, because that needs to come back. Okay. We need, Copy. We need to keep that going. I'll put that in the intro. Cool. That's pertinent information. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies, I am single. Ooh. You know, taking it to a whole nother... Sorry, was that was that the right time to do sure. that? Sure, okay. whenever you feel it. Okay. As long as you don't abuse it, I won't take it from you. Okay. I have taken it from people. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they just get too excited. They're a little drunk. They just keep hitting it at the wrong <laughs> times. So I will take it away. Yeah. yeah. You'd be like, so my grandmother died yesterday, and someone's like... Yeah. Oh, that, sh- that's a good use of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a perfect use of it. <laughs> Rest that's in peace. hilarious. Yeah. Uh yeah, I just went to a funeral. Yeah, there, there's a lot of great reasons to use it that are comedic, but when it just it's over and over and it's not, yeah. then you're just fucking it up. Yeah, you know, fucking up the conversation. Yeah. Speaking of death, I was walking out of 11 Street Station. I was walking out of 11 Street Station this morning, and the wind blew over the "Please wait to be seated" sign. Mm-hmm. Like as right in front of me as I was walking out, so she's like, Doo. I looked at it and I was like, "Please wait to lay down." And then Chuck, Chuck Hank was next to me and he said, "Please wait to die." And we're like, "Oh, please wait your turn to die." Mm-hmm. What if we put that sign up in like a funeral home? Do you think people would appreciate it or not? I don't know. Um, they're already decorated so shittily. I I had a. There was a comic last night talking about this. Really? About how funeral homes are the only places that could be decorated the way they are. I forget the specifics, but... I've walked into some pe- people's grandparents' house that was looked like a funeral home. Basically. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just jumping the gun a little bit. Yeah, as yeah. As it were. Well, I would put that sign up in a funeral home if I owned one. If If I owned one. You should. I should own a funeral home or? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't think I could. Uh, I wonder what overhead startup costs are for a funeral home. Because, like, man, those are, I mean, that's a lucrative business. Extremely. And talk about just like consistency. Like people fucking die. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially these times. I'm sure Corona affected every other industry other than funeral homes. Well, it oh, affected man. them just in a positive way. Oh, man. Oh man, I I would like to go like around a city and like interview all the people from the funeral homes and see how their pandemic was. Mm. Be interesting. Have you ever thought about being a reporter? Um, yes. The last time I thought about being a reporter, I was in the sixth grade, mm. and I was uh, the camera guy for the uh, middle school news team. You had a middle school news team. Damn right, we did. Was that so. The most- boring fucking thing to watch ever. oh my god we it was so much fun uh yeah it was pretty boring to watch but it was it was fun to make um 
But uh, yeah, it was uh, sixth and seventh grade, and my girlfriend, my middle school girlfriend, was the uh, n- the news anchor, mm-hmm. and so she hot. Well, well, I thought she was hot. She was my girlfriend. She was the news anchor. She had to be somewhat attractive. Yeah, yeah. You so, rarely look at a room, pick the butt ugly kid, and be like, "You be on camera." <laughs> Uh, it was great though so like the teacher that was like doing it who was supposed to be in charge he would just leave us alone while we were supposed to tape classic so we didn't just tape news but what else did you tape? <laughs> uh we we just turned it off and started making out you know kid shit but uh best time of my life that was the last time i thought about being a reporter hmm. yeah well i mean you just just like you just said, I should go around a city and just interview mm-hmm. fucking funeral home directors or whatever. That You say shit like that all the time. That, that's the only reason I thought of it. Mm. I feel like you could potentially be a good reporter. You know who's a good reporter is my friend Pat Lohman. Mm. And he just moved back. He recently won an Emmy, I think is what it's called. TV award. For reporting. Mm-hmm. And he was doing that back on the East Coast. And he just recently moved back home to New Mexico. And he's in Albuquerque, and he's part of a, a Roots uh, newspaper uh, organization. Just all shootings. Starting. Carjackings. <laughs> so look up Pat Lohman and his reporting, because he's a damn good writer and reporter. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Go, Pat, go. Did you know Gallup, or maybe this is not true anymore, but uh, Gallup didn't have an OBGYN and a place for women to go give birth? Really? Mm-hmm. What about hospitals? I mean, there's a hospital there, Where but... Where were you born? I was born in the hospital. In Gallup? I think so. Okay. I think so. Ma? Ma? Where was I born? I was Ma? born in the Farmington Hospital. Huh. Yeah. My mom worked at a trucking company, and the sign outside the trucking company said, Congratulations, Lisa, on your new baby boy, Brian. Wow. Mm-hmm. Is there a picture of it? Uh, I think so. I think I've actually seen it. So I think there was a picture of it. Nice. Somewhere. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Mac trucking. Nice. I'm going to I'm no, I was about to do it but no. Um <laughs> uh I'm going to do some special uh for for my mom for giving birth to me on my on my birthday. Really? Yeah. That's that's a hot take. Yeah, I've yeah. decided that for like my birthday is not a celebration of me, it's a celebration of my mom. Hmm. You know, cuz you know she, she fucking birthed me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do something special for her and be like, "This is your day, mom. This ain't my day. This is your day." You are actually gonna go to Gallup, or are you just gonna send her something? I might actually go to Gallup. Talk about sacrifice. Yeah, I mean it's only what two and a half hours away so far. Dude, I made the drive in two hours actually the other day. Mm. Yeah, hauled ass. Woo! How'd that make you feel? Great. Oh yeah, I was efficient. All in. Hauling, man. I'm not going to tell anyone what the route I took was, but um, if you're a New Mexican, you know which route I he took. He went through the res. <laughs> I did go through the res. <laughs> That's the only way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In and out, baby. It's the only way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. What else? What else are we doing here today? Um, You know, squeaking ducks, stuff like that. Nice. I think I'm going to super glue it on there. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. The uh, the sombrero came with a bottle of Mezcal, and uh, I couldn't help but think how awesome it would look on the alien. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty dope. And the alien came like that with the alien smoking a big old fatty joint. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was $8 on Amazon, baby. Sick. Podcast Sick. room accoutrement. Nice. Well, I needed an ashtray in here because I was taking the one out of the living room and then taking it back out there. And then I was using beer cans when I was smoking joints to like ash shit out. Mm-hmm. And then you only have to ash a joint in a full beer so many times before you're like, you know what? I'm going to buy a new fucking ashtray. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how it happened. You ever accidentally drink someone's spit can uh, from a beer can? No, but I've seen it so many times. It fucking sucks. So if many you times. chew tobacco, you should be more considerate just be careful i i chewed for years and uh i was always extremely considerate and conscious of that because my stepmom growing up was a cigarette smoker and my dad hated cigarettes Mm. so she would always like 
she was always on the sneak tip Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so if she heard a car pull up she'd just be like in whatever like so you as a kid just open like a fresh coca-cola that that red can it was ice cold you know what i mean you couldn't wait you'd take a quick sip and be like "Ooh, i gotta pee then you'd run to the bathroom and come back and just take a swig of it because you've been thinking about it since you left it and take a fat swig and it was just cigarette bro that that taste that smell is ingrained in me that's fucked my fucking friend was visiting the bus the other day and he put went out to smoke a cigarette and then he put it in his beer can and they brought the beer can in and Mm -hmm. left it in the bus so after he left like hours after he left smelled like shit i was like what the fuck it still smells like fucking what's his name and uh and and cigarettes you know Mm mm-hmm I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm opening windows and shit. Smell doesn't go away. And then I start picking up beer cans and and to put them away. And I pick one up and I'm like, ding, ding, ding. That's what it was. Dirty. Fact. Disrespectful. Motherfucker. (sighs) But to be fair, where the fuck else was he going to put it? It's not like there's a trash can right outside. Uh, Yeah, that is a step better than just littering butts everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... If I see you throw a cigarette in my yard, I will slap you in the face. <laughs> I've done it. Good thing I don't smoke cigarettes. I've done it. Yeah. I've seen it in my yard. Yeah. In the fence. Yeah. Like I even if it's out of the fence, dude, this is Colorado. Yeah. Fucking it's so beautiful. Why mm-hmm. would you contribute trash to this beautiful landscape for one? It's mm-hmm. just Why are people that smoke cigarettes the only people that are like, oh, fuck it? I don't know. There's just some kind of disconnect uh, happening up there. They're already uh. poisoning themselves, so they're like, fuck planet Earth. <laughs> oh, God. I feel similar about New Mexicans. Oh, New Mexic- <sighs> New Mexicans litter like fuckers. It's... it's Oh, my God. Yeah. What the fuck? All right, that's another, that's another conversation for another day. Did I tell you about my uh, crazy psycho chick that uh, run-in that I had on my way to Silverton? Oh, yeah, you did, but I feel like you should tell these people. All right, so I drive a big white bus, and I was accused of trafficking children in my bus on Mola's Pass. Mm -hmm. This chick tried getting into the bus. I wouldn't let her. She told me she was going to call the cops on me. I was just like, fucking do it. Call the cops, (laughs) you crazy bitch. Oh, my God. any laws? Yeah. Yeah, so... Going 10 under the speed limit, because yeah. that's all she'll do? Yeah, seriously. So, no, I, I just fucking left the parking lot of Mullis Pass and proceeded about my way to Silverton, because I had shit to do, like, you know, most adults. So, go down there, and she follows me all the way into Silverton and just stalks me for, like, an hour. It was, had me very worried, so... So, in hindsight, do you think... Because we're just going to go off on a limb here and say... Meth head, right? Yeah. Based on the description I, I received. Yeah, I was thinking she might yeah, be coming down off meth. Okay, and, so do you, you know. think that she actually thought you had children in the bus, or do you think she was trying to rob your bus? I think she was trying to rob me, mm-hmm. and I didn't see if there was anyone in her car with her. The windows were tinted too dark, so I couldn't tell if she had anyone in her car with her. Always you know? a good sign. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, I thought she was trying to fucking case it and rob me. That's what I really thought. Sounds so. like you made the right decision. Yeah. And at one point in Silverton, she was like walking a block away looking at me. Mm-hmm. And I look over to the uh, opposite side and there was another shady character walking at the exact same time looking inward like I'm in the center. And I've got two shady characters. Surrounded. Yeah. Just wa- looking inward. And, I, and I'm just like, oh, fuck. And I didn't leave the bus out of my side. I was like, nope, not getting robbed today. Mm-mm. So you also have a large dog in the bus. Yes, I have a large dog, but even then, I was still worried. I mean, fucking people are crazy, man. I know my biggest like since I got my dog, I don't have that much valuable shit in here. One of the most valuable things is like that base behind me, mm-hmm. and it's not even that valuable. You know what I mean? But it's right there. Yeah. But um, one of my biggest worries has always been, man, I would rather somebody just rob me than shoot my dog to rob me. Like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah i'd rather lose something material of value than yeah. my fucking dog yeah. yeah but that being said 
it's kind of what dogs are you know what i mean they're kind of the protection they're, that's kind of how they got domesticated like i'll give you food if you let us know when the big fucking scary dogs are coming mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah yeah well luckily to uh my buddy dan he's the owner of the avon hotel shout out to dan he uh was like you could just pull the bus into the yard and so he let me pull the bus into the yard of the hotel and i just i hunkered down shut the fence behind you yeah we put the chain up i was like not today hell yeah not today well i'm glad it's got a happy ending yeah but me too I'm, i mean i know from experience that it was a, a nerve-wracking day it was very nerve-wracking and uh and now all my friends just crack child trafficking jokes mm. with me you know and just like <laughs> my buddy Dan didn't even hesitate. It was day of, and I was going up there to give him some cash for a PA system that I was renting. Right. And I hand it to him, and fucking, you know, hadn't hadn't even been an hour since the fucking ordeal happened, and he looks at it and he's like, "Oh, is this for the kids?" <laughs> That's a good friend, honestly. Your friend should call you on your shit, even if it's uh, not true. Oh man, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, what time do we got? We have forty five minutes. Forty five? Word. Yeah. Okay. I uh what time what what is the actual time? Four twenty. Four twenty <laughs> Nice. Uh all right, cool. I got plenty of time. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought it, we were I, I was looking at the sun go down and I was just like, Oh fuck, it feels like it's getting late. That goes down early. Yeah, yeah, James showed up yesterday. He's like, what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking look. <laughs> I called it, though. You did I was, called it. I was off I was off by seven minutes. Yeah. Whether or not you checked your phone right before you got. No bullshit. Fucking nope. prove it. Nope. Just straight up sun sundial. Yeah. And you're not trafficking children either. Okay, James. I don't traffic children, and I can read the sun. Mm. I can read it. Yeah. I feel like trafficking children is like... I don't even know if I want to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. I mean, I feel like if you're a, like, I feel like there could be a reason to do it for good. Like, like a coyote. You know? <laughs> well, I think I would have to uh, strap up like the boondock saints and go like liberate children from children traffickers. You think there's any Irish coyotes? And uh, there's going to be a word, for in, an Irish word for that mm. instead of coyote. Do you think they have them in Ireland? I think they have like a red wolf. Like a small wolf. Isn't Ireland an island? Mm. I'm awful at geography. Mm -hmm. There's a map over there, but it's hard to read. I told my girlfriend I wanted a big ass map of the world for the podcast room so I didn't look like an idiot every time a geographical thing came up. (laughs) And she got you that. She got me that. (laughs) (laughs) That's tiny too. I mean, I love her and I'm appreciative, but it's fucking useless from where (laughs) I'm at. It's cool. It looks like boobs or a butt or something. Oh my God. Okay, wait. I got it. I, I, I gotta look real fast. I mean, we could have Googled it easier, but yeah, whatever makes you happy. Jesus, I can't even. I can't even read. No, that. it's fucking useless. Yeah, <laughs> I love my girlfriend more than anything, but that is not what I was looking for. That's uh, all. Yeah, now yeah. I know. think I want a table with a world map on it. Oh, that'd be cool. Like that'd it, be cool. Eight one three zero one used to have. The big yeah. maps on the tables, yep. that'd be yep. sick. Mm-hmm. Yep. But we uh, make virtually zero money for the... It actually loses me money every year. And uh, yeah. The, the podcast? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Re- yeah. Release and distribution fees and whatever. Yeah, storage, online storage mostly. Ah, mm-hmm. gotcha, gotcha. Because, I mean, it who, takes up space. Who do you distribute through? Uh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud? Mm-hmm. I think DistroKid has like an unlimited amount of uh, upload. I mean, that's cool. Per year. YouTube's free, and I've put hours on YouTube. Yeah. Never had to pay a dollar. But, uh, huh. yeah, I, it just comes down to storage, I mm-hmm. think. And I like SoundCloud just because it's simple, and I know how to use it. And, mm-hmm. again, uh, lack of patience. Yeah, you you don't have the most patience. I'm really good at getting shit done. <laughs> if you point me in the direction of shit that needs to be done, <laughs> I will get shit done. But like figuring out alternate ways to do things to save money, I'm like, fuck it. It's twenty bucks. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. 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 But uh at least you get shit done. 
Always. Yeah. Yeah. It's my best quality. Yeah. Like this podcast. What number of podcast is this? Um, This is like 163, and there was like 30 plus quarantine episodes, so we're almost 200. Damn. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you were doing the quarantines separate. Well, it was because we did episode 99, and then Phil, Phil bailed on the pod because he was having a kid. Great reason. Um, great reason to not do this fucking thing. <laughs> but I didn't want to do episode 100 without him. I felt like it was like accomplishing something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. yeah, we finally got him back, did episode 100, and started counting up from there. Nice, nice. Yeah. He can't bring his baby with him for, like, one taping? I think it'd be fun. <sighs> Kids are fucking... Not good for <laughs> focusing on anything. <laughs> Just have the baby like right here on the table in a rocker. She's older than that. She can like walk around and shit. Oh, she oh, be right. unplugging shit and yeah. burning herself, electrocuting herself with the fucking wiring in this goddamn house. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. This this house is a, a baby She's death trap. Waiting to burn down. Yeah. yeah. It's my biggest concern. <laughs> But, you know, there's been so many people that grew up in baby death traps, and they're fine. (laughs) I. uh, Like I said, I learned everything the hard way, James, including don't put a fork in an outlet. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. I don't think I actually did that, but I definitely got shocked multiple times as a child. (laughs) Oh, man. I've definitely, like touched metal to metal on battery posts you know what i mean like burn, like mm-hmm. that shit's happened mm-hmm. countless times mm-hmm. i always had a fear of battery posts growing up my Where dad did that fear come from my Your dad put it in you no no my dad would just be like quit being a pussy just nice. fucking do it so a good dad yeah. <laughs> my dad's strategy for teaching me things was uh yeah go out and start on it i'll be there uh-huh and then he just started a movie like say Die Hard started ten minutes ago, and we're like, "Dad, I need like my first vehicle it was just this hunk of shit, <laughs> hunk of shit Ford Ranger. Bought it for five hundred dollars." And he'd be like, "Yeah, just go out there and get started." There was no Google, you know. There was no smartphones. There was no, you you YouTube wasn't in your pocket. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you figured shit out either with a manual which he had to have for each specific model of mm-hmm. vehicle, mm-hmm. the Chitlins or mm-hmm. whatever the other one was. But, uh, yeah, I figured shit out by fucking shit up, mostly. That's good. That's good. Uh, it My problem solving these days is, like, pretty on point when it comes to, like, mechanical shit. Nice. My dad might argue the other way. <laughs> he might be like, he's giving himself a little too much credit. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more useful than your average woman. But. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. I think I'm more useful than your average man. <laughs> These days, I think I know more than your average man. But. Oh, not man. Not much more. Now I, now I can't stop thinking about uh, um, uh, that atmosphere song and he's singing about the uh, hot mechanic woman. Mm hmm. Uh, what was her name? I forget. She was hot. Dirty. Yeah. Dirty. That's the song. Yeah. Such a dirty girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good that song. That video is hot. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it in so long. I don't even remember it. I just remember having a boner. That's that's how <laughs> I remember things. If I had a boner, it's like crystal clear. If if not, oh. barely notice. Oh, man. When you were going through puberty, did you ever, like, get a a random boner, like, in the middle of class? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was rough. I think that's why I started wearing baggy clothes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just to hide my boner. Yeah, just tuck it in the waist strap. Always. (laughs) But if you had a shirt that, like, was tight... That's not hiding it. It's bulge. It's not hiding this bulge. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have a big dick, but... (laughs) You can see it. <laughs> it's gir- well, is it girthy? Is, is that what you're trying to say? More more girth. I don't know. I think I have a pretty average dick. It, I don't know. I can get a hand around. <laughs> it's not that girthy. I'm not dealing with the fucking Foster's kid over here. <laughs> oh gosh, I wonder what Google would say is the average size. I think five and a half inches. What? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah, I'm a little over that. Yeah. <laughs> I know because I've measured. Every dude has. If you had access to a measuring tape. I told 
<laughs> I told my friends that this, I knew this was six inches because I used to work on cars and like that's how I'd measure like go karts specifically. That's how I'd measure six inches of wire mm-hmm. was just bam, bam, bam. But I actually learned that because I was measuring my dick with it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I think my head's grown since then. So, which means my dick has too. Uh, <laughs> at least you know one's keeping up with the other. You know. Yeah, my dick was six inches at one point. That's like oh, that's like that Joe Coy fucking bit when he's talking about his son and he's like, Dad, ting ting, my 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 pube hair is growing, but my my dick isn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and that's why God invented the manscaped. <laughs> Do you trim your pubes or no? Uh, yeah, I like to keep it tidy. I like to think you do it with scissors. No. No? No. Nope. Beard trimmer? Yep. yep. Same beard trimmer? No. Nope. Don't you lie to me, you nope. son of a bitch. No. Nope. <laughs> There's no shame here. <laughs> Separate trimmer. Evan, nice. Evan Evan, walked in the bathroom the other day, and actually I hadn't done any pube work that day. Mm-hmm. I was I was just cutting my you hair. You do it daily? No. Oh. No, no. Okay. But uh, that particular day, I was cutting my hair and my mm-hmm. beard. So uh, there's there was just hair. Everywhere. Oh, I was there. Yeah. yeah, you were there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, Evan walks in, sees the hair on the floor, and he's just like, "Oh, you've been cutting your pubes." And I I wanted to say yes, I I was, but I can't lie. So I so I said no, I wasn't. If you are cutting your pubes, uh, pro tip: put a piece of newspaper down. Um, there's laminate floor. Mm. Um, so sweep. Well, even then, <laughs> sweep and then mop. I'd go with the wipe. newspaper for. First line of defense. First line of defense. <laughs> so I have a Manscaped. Very nice. Uh, they say it's not possible to nick yourself. It's totally it's possible. It's always possible to nick your nutsack. Yeah. I haven't n- nicked anything else. Any smooth skin, you can just pretty much fucking go after it. Yeah. But the yeah. nutsack, no matter what you're using, you got to be careful. you got to be careful. Here, i got a good technique, all right? Bumpy ground. All right, let's see. Uh, i got a really good technique. So Go Captain Morgan. One you, leg up. <laughs> you you one leg okay yes that's that's step one one leg up that's how I wipe my ass go on and then second you gotta choke the turkey gobbler mm, really? you gotta choke it the brain yeah <laughs> 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 you go the brain yeah you go the brain okay you go the brain and then that way like you know there's no like excess or like free skin wrinkles. No or wrinkles, or wrinkles. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 so just just tighten it all up and and brain what you said the mm-hmm. brain. And then just slowly, slowly do your job around there. And the only you know. time I have an issue is the seam. The seam. Yeah, you know where the Lord sewed you together, right there, in the middle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mm. nuts have a seam. <laughs> where the Lord sewed you together. <laughs> I think I sold that from Theo <laughs> Bob. But uh, yeah, the seam seems to be an issue. Uh huh. And uh, right where it connects to like the base. It's like right there, there's a few stubborn hairs sometimes where I have an issue. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like I don't have enough hands. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's a like it's a team activity sometimes mm-hmm. where if I just had one more person to pull the sack that way and I could pull it this way and still operate the trimmer, mm-hmm. it'd be way easier. But what I do, you know those 99 cent gator clips that we use on everything? They're like metal spring clips. Uh, the ones at Home Depot? Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just clip my nuts on the counter there. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to get that. <laughs> so, all right. So my technique is the brain, and mm-hmm. yours is the bat wing. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I usually stretch it out. Yeah, that seems because I mean you don't. You need to trim the end, and I'm gonna use the brain next time I do it. But it's like you still gotta get the connective areas, yeah. and yeah. the stretch seems to be the move. So, so lesson of this conversation is do both. The bat wing and the brain. Right. I've been missing the brain. And um, I've been missing the bat wing. Well, so now there we go. We got a complete nut shaver between the two of us. <laughs> uh trademarking this uh this uh this uh this whole technique. deal. Yeah. Uh, starts with the Captain Morgan, brain, <laughs> bat wing, then you go on with go on about your business, I suppose. <laughs> oh, but the manscaped comes with newspapers that all the articles are like in this newspaper are like styles to trim your pubes into and like just funny stories about genitalia which <laughs> i enjoy but i think i've got one more of those left 
So I might have to go get a Durango Herald soon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, I mean, I the only thing I cover up in the bathroom is the drain. I, I, I use either newspaper or paper towels. Mm. And I cover up the drain to catch all that to catch all that hair. I I cut my own hair, and so I need a mirror. Mm. Um, I need to see what I'm doing. See, I don't do that. I only trim my own pubes. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I I do it all, man. And my razor has a light head on to, it. Head bitch. to ball. Head to ball. Oh, nice. Yeah, I turn the lights off to trim my balls. <laughs> Why? Because I like danger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you're not living on the edge, man. Are you even living? Yeah, you're just taking up too much space. Everybody dies, not everybody lives. Am I right? <laughs> oh, boy. All right, I'm cracking into the second beer here. Back up beer. Engage. <sighs> Damn, right. I need to catch up. I'm over here acting like a fucking 16-year-old drinking his first Bud Light. Ha. <laughs> My first, uh, the first beer I got into when I was young was Fat Tire. Yeah, me too. My mom was a big fan of Fat Tire. I thought it was a craft beer. It's craftier than this. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, I think this is better. I love Bud Light. It it suits all the needs. When I first started drinking it, I was so. I moved to Durango on probation. Mm -hmm. Twenty one years old, maybe twenty three. I don't know, but I was on probation. wasn't allowed to drink. Mm -hmm. But when I did, I'd buy craft beers because it made me feel like I was like a real beer drinker or some, I don't know. There was some sort of status with me involved in the beer I was drinking. Like I felt like I was cooler or something because of the beer I was drinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I realized is it doesn't matter what beer I drink. I drink the same amount of beer no matter what. And I was getting fucked up all the time because i was only drinking craft beer yeah right and spending heavy. way more money yeah like yeah. it's not cheap yeah 10 bucks a six pack and that's like the low side yeah and uh yeah one day let's just say one day it clicked why all my alcoholic family drinks bud light coors light things that come in large quantities at small price because not only does it support support their alcoholism and their bank account it also doesn't get you fucked up yeah yeah like you have to you have to go ham on some bud light to get fucked up yeah like, it's a social beer for sure yeah my joint keeps running out obviously i don't need it if i'm not paying that much attention to it. <laughs> dude how about that pilsner though over at Sunnyside? that five oh. bucks a four pack oh dude <laughs> uh, i don't even know what it's called but it is one of my favorite beers ever it's so great and it'll get you a little toasty as well it will it will yeah you drink a four pack you're gonna feel it i got one yesterday and i was i've been buying these fucking four packs for months now and Sometimes i'm still out excited and it me out. that's because i think you evan and i are the only people in the neighborhood that are getting them i i usually buy two at a time yeah uh, because uh, smart i buy like 18 pack of bud light Mm -hmm. Or I'll buy two of those, and I'm like, I'm good for like at least a day and a half. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a bit of an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I'm total functioning, al fun functioning alcoholic. I'm, I'm high functioning. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 This is true. Like You're a kid with dyslexia that figures out how to get through that book. You know what I mean? That's that's how <laughs> I go through life. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Life is better with beer. Yeah. <laughs> it really is, especially if you're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke just, a joint, crack a beer, and try to frown. All right, <laughs> <laughs> we're just sending all the wrong messages to the kids out there. If those kids listen to this, <laughs> they are on the wrong path already, my friend. <laughs> no hope, no hope. Nah, if there's adults listening to this, <laughs> I'm going on another podcast on Friday. What? Yeah, the the Whiskey Real podcast. Nice. Yeah, I'm probably gonna talk about it in the intro because. Well, my idea is they're old, right? They're old as shit. Do you know Bobby Noyes? No idea. Oh, uh, we well, we were at the deli the other day after frisbee golf, and he came and talked to me for a while. Mm -hmm. Old fuck glasses. Mm -hmm. They're like fifty, but um, my idea is they probably have way different listeners than us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Different demographic. So I'm gonna use hopefully to market this podcast and comedy and whatever. Just kind of put myself in their listeners' minds mm -hmm. 
which is more than I can do at this moment. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a good opportunity. And they've been asking me for a while, but then they kind of, so the only reason I know about this podcast, know these people is because my buddy, Sean Moe was part of starting it. Love Sean Moe, Animus Marketing, check him out. Mm. Um, and then he got in a fight with one of them and they stopped doing the podcast and then they started it up again without him. And I was like, fuck these guys. And, <laughs> <laughs> but they came, one of them came to Steamworks all the time because he's a tech guy. So he works from home. Okay. And he basically just goes to like different bars around town, sits there for hours while he's doing his job and drinking a beer. Sick. Socializing, whatever. But he would see me at Steamworks all the time and be like, dude, we got to have you on. And I was always like, oh, yeah, sometime. But in my head, I was like, fuck you, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the old passive aggressive, fuck you. <laughs> well, I was also at work. And he was a regular customer, like four uh, days yeah. a week. Like, Yeah, I didn't want to say that. Management to knew him. Yeah. Owners knew him. Like, yeah. you know, I. I was a good cook, but I don't know if I was good enough to just start saying fuck you to customers. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. And since then, I've gotten over it. And Sean Moe made up with them, so I don't, I hold no grudge. Good. But at the time, I was it's just all. like, I'm on Team Sean Moe, bitch. Gotcha. But now it's all Because I'm a ride or die with water. boys. Water under the fridge? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Yeah, That's fridge good. is broken. But there's water in it. And it's leaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that means. Okay, gotcha. I would assume. What uh, What do they talk about on this podcast? Like, what's the main shit they do? Um, Honestly, so they like to call themselves the podcast of Southwest Colorado. Uh, I was a podcast first, first of all. These old fucks barely know how to use technology, so they didn't yeah. know this. Um, I'm just talking shit. I love them. <laughs> and if they don't know that, then fuck them. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they actually do a bit of a public service for me because uh, one of them, Aaron Brandis, he was in the music scene in L.A. That's where he grew up mm -hmm. and grew up in bands, basically working catering mm -hmm. to support his musicianship and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he's really like tuned in to like hip hop, um, especially like underground hip hop, like rhyme stairs and shit like that. Sick. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. I want to make another plug. Go on. Um, so the public service I would say is they've turned me on to a lot of good music. Nice. They've also turned me on to a lot of shit that I was like, this is gay. But <laughs> meaning the singer was homosexual. I'm oh, sorry. oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I've, I've been saying a lot of wild shit. I said some wild shit on stage last night. I went oh, at everybody. Nice. Really? Yeah. What, what'd you say? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Dude. But. Did anyone want to fight you? Just because a comic is trans doesn't mean they're off limits. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, people. We're all people. Yeah, exactly. We're all people. Yeah, and if you want to play this game, then... Uh, if, you can't, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah, don't don't even pick up that mic if yeah. you don't want shit talked. I yeah. even talk shit to the crowd because, I don't know, they were just hot and excited at first, and the first few comics didn't have a well-put-together set. They were just kind of ranting, and that's fine. Like, it's an open mic. You have all the right in the world to do that. And if you're working out material, like, I totally understand that. That's what I was doing last night. I went up with all new shit, and I was like, I'm just going to see how this goes. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a well-put-together set. But they were a fantastic crowd for, like, the first five comics who were basically, like, some of them were better than others, whatever. But it was just ranting nonsense mm -hmm. that wasn't, well, it wasn't well-written. Like, it wasn't thought out. It mm -hmm. Sounds it like was just, a podcast. It was nonsense. Correct. Um, <laughs> correct. But they know what they're signing up for. Uh, <laughs> but the only reason I talked shit is because they were a fantastic crowd for all these people. And it's it was like a supportive kind of laughing at people. And then this one comic, he's new to town. He's from L.A. He's been doing it like seven years. Came up with a very well-polished set. It ah. was like a really smart, like clever good jokes and they gave him like half the energy they gave everybody else Aww. so i went up and i was like oh good on you guys for laughing at all these people that came up with bullshit and this poor fucker worked his ass off on it and you basically told him to go fuck himself it didn't go great um, <laughs> <laughs> i had a good set in the end whatever <laughs> you just embraced the fire you're just like fuck it yeah tonight's at the starlight open mic when i'm in a bad mood yeah you know it <laughs> 
Oh man, I wonder if anyone's uh, therapists ever were like, you should go sign up for an open mic. So my buddy Jason, he was the other person I recommended for the security job. His therapist is happy he does it uh, because it gives him an outlet. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think there's, I mean, I kind of use it as therapy, especially last night. I was, I was really giving it to these poor ba- people. <laughs> I got laughs. I mean, I was trying to tell jokes. But in the middle, I was just talking shit to other comics. Yeah, that's that's what comedy night. Come on. Yeah, sometimes it goes way better than others. Last yeah. night was one of the others. Yeah. But I still didn't bomb. I yeah. don't know. I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you recorded it. Always. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Cool. Because even if it's just that one funny thing you say that could tag onto a joke, like because usually when I'm coming or going through recordings. It's like, oh, that was terrible. Don't ever do that again. And then sometimes I'm like, that's the first time I've said that. And then you write it down, and now it's actually part of that bit. It wasn't just a spur-of-the-moment thing. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to capture the -the spur-of-the-moment magic Mm -hmm. and then apply it to the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And people don't understand, like, from what I've experienced, like people that are at their first open mic, for one, they're like, you've told this joke before? When you're like, yeah, I've been working on that joke. They're like, it's not just off the top of your head it's like no bitch like Mm -hmm. do you know how hard that is like Mm -hmm. here you go be funny Mm -hmm. you know that's what i want to do but Mm -hmm. that's usually a terrible idea i've done it before yeah i did it that one time i went with you to uh the el rancho and signed up for open mic yeah but that was fine you actually thought through some shit before you went up there kind of kind of but i bombed yeah that's okay bombing isn't worst case scenario walked off in shame worst case scenario is when people get up there and they find comfort up there, even though they're not doing good. They get comfortable, and then they want to run the light, and you're, like, flashing the light at them, and then that's usually the point where you're like, oh, shit, I didn't tell this bitch what the light means. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they're up there like, this fucking weirdo just keeps on shining a flashlight on me while I'm trying to do my thing. Oh, they're taking my picture. Oh, uh. <laughs> I'm a star. That's what it feels like. <laughs> it feels like that usually where they're like, <laughs> and everybody's like, get off the stage. <laughs> I've turned, I've turned the PA off. Oh shit. Yeah. I'll just do. Damn. And then I, I had this bitch one time. I wasn't even hosting the show, but it was like five minutes over. We were flashing the light, whatever. And then I felt like I had to get involved for the sake of the audience. And yeah, we just turned the PA off. And then she started yelling. Oh my god. Didn't take the hint. Like, oh, this doesn't work anymore. Okay, so Oh my god. You crazy bitch. And then I had to go stand behind the crowd and be like Yeah. The fuck? (laughs) Still like if it was a dude, I could just walk up there, but Yeah. It was like some crazy as far as I could tell, bitch, going through some shit. You know? <laughs> oh, man. Do you get a lot of those folks? They're like, they're going through some shit, and they're like, I'm going to go do stand-up comedy. It's and then, rare. And then they just unload. We don't get that many like new people. Like We have a small scene. We all kind of know each other. And when there's a new person, everybody knows. You know, Last night we did, though, um, a fellow named Waldo, and he went up there and said some pretty insensitive shit for this climate uh nice. i went and took a piss in the middle and then wrote some jokes about him <laughs> <laughs> oh shit poor, on him waldo. My turn. poor waldo no, he was fucked up don't feel bad for this fucking guy yeah old shit-faced oh man <laughs> and i was the one that was like hey man because he he thought it was the music mic so he was like so what do you play and i was like oh no this is comedy he was like, oh. I was like, but you can sign up if you want. He's like, well, might as well give it a try. <laughs> and then yeah. I don't know how much he drank between that conversation and 30 minutes later when he went on stage, but it seemed like a lot. Like, because mm-hmm. he was a completely different person than the one I talked to. He was just fucked up. He probably realized, like, oh, fuck, I signed up for comedy. And then just start hitting the sauce. And you know, when people are like, you have any racist family members that like say wild shit oh, for a God. laugh? Oh, it was man. like shit. I'm not doing good. The gays like <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a reaction, and half the people in the bar are gay or trans, and they're like, okay, like. 
Oh, I'll go after the trans God. comics and the gay comics, but only if it's good. Yeah, you do it in good taste. Not because they're gay. Yeah. But because I like, like, last night we have this comic, Andy. He's pretty new, but he's a young bi kid. He's sassy as all get out. And uh, he he kind of has this thing in his mind where he's like, his friends walked in from Steamworks. One of them is like, Maybe half black. I don't know. Very darker complexion. But she could be like Asian. I don't know. She's hot. She's hot. Um, But at one point he was like, oh, and the little brown girl. And everybody in the crowd was like, ooh. So I went up there and I was like, I think it's funny that Andy's bi so he thinks he could be racist. Just, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if a gay or trans person says something stupid, that's when I jump in. Yeah. Oh, man, you can go after anyone for any little thing. I mean, well, not any little thing. I mean, you don't want to be hateful. You don't want to be racist. No, you but if you they don't do be something sexist. like that, I have no problem calling it out. Yeah. Which is, it, it's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Sometimes I don't have a set and I just sign up last. And as everybody's going, I'm just writing jokes about them. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about uh, Chappelle's last stand-up, the one he got a bunch of flack for? <sighs> I mean, it was fine. Yeah. I mean, the whole trans insensitive thing, he was basically talking about his trans friend Yeah. that opened for him in comedy. He gave this person an opportunity to open for him on the biggest platform ever, opening for Dave fucking Chappelle. Yeah. I think the people that had a problem with it didn't watch it. And that uh, being said, I don't think it was that funny. Uh, I think it was, I think he's hit like a preachy stage in his career that yeah. is less entertaining to me. Yeah. I mean, he makes a lot of good points. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah he does he gets a little philosophical in his in his uh, delivery now. And just comparing old Dave Chappelle to now, it's just not as funny. Yeah, like back when he was just making fun of white people, love that shit. Oh like, because man. it was joke 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 joke. Oh, I just think man. it's less entertaining now. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I I don't have a problem with anything he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the whole thing too, and I didn't think it was that intense. So I was just like, oh. I, I heard about all the flack he was getting, and I was like, I need to watch this and see what the fuck it's he said. It's people that read a headline and were like, fuck Dave Chappelle, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think if anybody that actually watched it, other than the one person that put out the big headline, some insensitive fuck that was just trying to make their name in journalism by shitting on the biggest comic in the world. Mm -hmm. Coattailing. Yeah, just being a little bitch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you have a time? Yeah. We should probably wrap this up. We wrapped yeah, it it's up. It's four fifty. It's four fifty. Yeah. Woo! That was a hot hour. Uh, almost eighty minutes. Sick. More with music. Sick. All righty. Um, yeah, you got your plugs in. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll say them again later if you leave that piece of paper. Okay. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Um, yeah, or? I wanna I wanna talk about um the Dalai Lama. But uh, I don't think we have enough time for that, so I'll just leave it at that. How do you feel about other races? Just kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I just wanted to see if he'd say something crazy. <laughs> I like saying wild shit. All righty. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, shout out to Ethan Esparza and the Chava people, Bo James, everybody that contributed music to the podcast, and thanks to our one and only sponsor, Dead Room Comedy. Uh, check out all their shit. I'll say it in the intro. All the links are below for Bo James and et cetera. Whatever. Okay, thanks for listening. Um, you're weird people for listening, but I appreciate it. Deuces. Peace. <laughs>
coming at your neck, I could have died today. The swamp smoking cigarettes and got precision set of skills. And imagination, creations, and no racing with motivation. I'm chasing my goals, giants that I'll be racing. I'ma stride through the finish like a 6 5 Jamaican. Beating my chest like, yeah, what my name is. Ink on my chest, what? My homie spray paint in. Summer day smoke, escape. PlayStation, he looking down on me and I can't stay patient. I ain't just trying to say shit, sit back and face this real tight vibe and smoke instrumental playlist. Chill in the cut, now these small places I ain't getting love now, man. Fuck being famous, yeah, they tell me it's really hard to make it. They don't understand I love being underestimated. Second guess it and I'll take it that you're undereducated. Anyway, this got me thinking about them old records playing why It's filled with soul and it fills my mind. Tell for the shaking while the rhythm takes flight. What I'm doing wrong, I ain't gonna fake right. I don't get no sleep because the music takes night. Nocturnal life with my basement lights. Just roll some nice, keep my drink on ice. If you don't get it once and you don't hear it twice, moving on this leave right here is out of sight. I'ma stay away. Stay away.